we've been working through quite a lot of uh, issues and uh, exploring and exposing beliefs. And uh, there was a time when we, we were working through something and there was a lot of emotional charge. And um, we were both being quite expressive and I'm usually quite reserved, but um, it was productive. But all of a sudden I felt an emotion inside me and there was a, it, had, it felt organic and I could more, more or less see it as, as a tube like this and it stopped me dead. I wouldn't say it, it wasn't blissful, it wasn't extremely distressing, it was just there, very powerful. And what I wanted to ask Cornelius was, while I was in this, just for those seconds, I, I don't think I felt as alive as that for a very long time. Mm -hmm. When we came back to still feeling free but continuing, the contrast between the aliveness there and that was really remarkable. And I would have, I thought afterwards, why didn't that continue? I, I felt it would have been wonderful if I'd just gone straight into, further into that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to ask about. So why didn't that feeling continue? That feeling of just being yes. alive? Well, not, not necessarily that. There was obviously something deep and powerful there. Mm -hmm. and, and something seemed to not let me progress into it. Mm -hmm. That's what I <laughs> you can sit down there. So I fully understand the question, actually. That's um, it. What, what's it, what was you, happening is that yeah. you you had that experience where you're experiencing the emotion for that for that for that few seconds. Yes. But then, oftentimes, there's another there's other capping emotions that that get triggered when we're fully experiencing an emotion. Right. This often happens when, uh, well, even things like during sex and things like that, where. Mm -hmm where you'll be open emotionally to one feeling and then it will trigger this other feeling like a lack of trust or a lack of you know, or hatred with men or something like that gets triggered through that process. And the key is to then allow that to happen instantly afterwards. But often what we do is we shut down that instant afterwards. <coughs> so, so what, and we may need and then another occasion to do it. So that <coughs> what you need to allow yourself to do in the end and what you will allow yourself to do in the end is that you'll be, these emotions will just be coming out of you and passing through you constantly and you won't be checking them, you won't be actually analysing them, yeah. you'll just be feeling every single one and you won't worry if you go from a blissful emotion into this terrible grief and back into a blissful emotion in the cycle of a half an hour. That won't worry you. At the moment it worries you because you think you're nuts doing it, right? Many times. Yeah. But, but in the future it won't worry you at all. You will just allow those cycles to occur any emotion come up as it flows and the key when you're fully choosing is you'll actually get to a stage where all of these emotions just pass through you constantly and in a day you, you go through different really happy <coughs> emotions and then really sad emotions and then you know angry emotions and then like in a day you, you cycle and everyone around you say what's wrong with that person no, they're not normal anymore and you're right you're not going to be normal anymore right do you want to be normal anymore <laughs> Don't you want to just be real? And, and that feeling you described of feeling alive, if you can stay in these emotions fairly consistently, you will feel very alive most of your time, most of the time. Yeah. I've found myself that it's only when I've shut down those emotions, I get back down into that suppressed state that I now no longer feel connected with, even with myself anymore. So it's a relief for me to just feel whatever I'm feeling, whether it's happy, sad, crying, joy, angry, whatever it is. Yeah. I wasn't aware of anything that took me out of it again. But there would have been something. There would have been something. Yeah. Can, can, is there anything helpful? Is there like intentions or...? Well, the first thing, yeah, the first yeah. thing is obviously say, well, right at that moment I was avoiding something. Yeah. What was it? Okay. Or that at that moment I had a fear pop up. What was that? Yeah. And ask yourself just what, what, was the, what were you afraid of in that instance? And usually you can access the underlying emotion <coughs> rapidly again if you do that. You'll be, many of you will be very tempted, right, when you start this process. You'll start it, you'll feel quite enthused, you start it, and then within a week you're thinking, wow, this is just totally overwhelming me, I can't handle this. And you'll want to shut it down. And um, I suppose the soul work should come with a warning. It's almost impossible to shut down once you start it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. 
And the reason why is because your soul loves feeling. <laughs> and after a while, you start, you start enjoying that feeling process. You'll find you process a lot of stuff. <laughs>